Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night. Uh, I've got Craig here with me, and uh, we are we have the privilege of being in James chapter three, finishing up that segment, uh, wrestling with earthly wisdom versus godly wisdom. And uh, let's just be honest, we haven't enjoyed the process more than what we've enjoyed the process, which we've enjoyed the process, yeah. but it's been painful. Yeah. I have Definitely. no idea what I just said, but it, we're going to talk about it later, way, so it stay painful. with us. Either way, it was painful. <laughs> hey, one of the things that we're looking forward to doing, uh, we want to, I want to, sh- one highlight, do you notice that there's drums here back behind us? Um, part of what we're doing is we're preparing for uh, Spokane to start opening up, and uh, I know Mayor Woodward, Woodard, Woodard, I think it's Woodard, mm-hmm. um, she was very uh, hopeful this morning on her news um, interview about the uh, application for heading to phase two, hoping, in her words, that it would be fired up this weekend. Um, and so part of what the elders have been doing, and, and Craig's been watching and, and kind of working with, is actually starting what we're going to call a home church initiative. I think we should call it directive, since that's what everybody's doing. We'll call it the home <laughs> church directive. Yeah. Um, but it, w- really what we're looking at is... Mm-hmm. Uh, encouraging, uh, we're looking for host uh, mm-hmm. host homes, and we're going to be looking for some host home servants, people to help kind of coordinate and, and lead discussions in that uh, in that setting. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we're asking for people to do is to consider gathering um, with a few people in the church at their homes on a Sunday morning, watch the service, and then fellowship together and talk about the service, talk about the sermon, talk mm-hmm. about the text, uh, and, and just to follow up in fellowship together. Yep. Um, Craig, you've been working on that, and may, maybe share just a little bit maybe about kind of what, what you've done, and um, hoping to roll this out really quick. Yep. Yeah, so we've been looking around, uh, seeing where everybody's kind of located on the map, and uh, looking at some centralized locations uh, around uh, the area, um, and we're looking, for, we're looking for host homes, and people, we're calling them servants, um, because we, don't, we aren't looking for leaders, we're looking for people to actually serve each other and to uh, open discussion afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be in, you can be in any form th- that you want, really, if people want to get together and have a meal or something like that. But, but basically gather together, watch the sermon, dis- discuss it um, in these groups. Um, and uh, so if you are interested in being a host home or uh, facilitating uh, these discussions, give the office a call. Um, we have a list we're going to be calling as well, but if that's something that just really strikes your heart and you think yeah. the Lord's calling you to do that, um, yeah, Let give us, us a call. And uh, some of those, um, we actually had one startup last week, yeah, um, uh, just spontaneously. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we'll try and get some more started this week, and then we hope that by the, the Sunday after Labor Day, we've got most of them going. And uh, so we'll start meeting together yeah. um, and uh, before we have the big... Absolutely. And, and I'm, I'm actually really excited about this. I think that this is one of the great opportunities for the church uh, to establish fellowship in their homes, uh, to, to gather together, to support one another, care for one another, um, and to do it in a life group, in, 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 a, in a home, in a small group where that mm-hmm. relationship can be built. But I also like the idea of doing that in a local community. There's nothing better than being gathered with a couple of neighbors and realizing, man, we live right here in the same spot. I was talking to a couple of the people on what we're calling the west side of Liberty Lake Lake. Mm-hmm. Um, and west so Lake it's, area. Yeah, it's not going to be a movie or anything, so don't worry about that. But the reality is, is that there's several people that live right there, and that could be their ministry. That could be their mission um, as a group, as a small group, is to pray for their neighbors and start praying for the people that live right there next to them, and and actually to build mm-hmm. community and build uh, connectedness and fellowship right out of that opportunity. So really excited about what this could be and what God might be doing in this time. Um, and I've heard from a number of people that are just excited to gather in fellowship and, mm-hmm. and care for one another. Um, and I think that'll be one of the great outcomes that God does in the church is to wake us up to how wonderful it is to be a family of believers and to fellowship together and the privilege uh, that we have in doing that as a church. Right now, we're tentatively planning for June 14th to be our first uh, service back. Um, we're we're going to keep an eye on what's happening in the community and, and with, our, uh, with our, our, the city council and everything that's happening and the, the county and all that, um, you know, in an effort to honor the Lord and what we do. But we're, we're anticipating, we're hoping, we're praying um, that that is our first Sunday back. There will be some 
attempts to kind of have some space, make sure people are comfortable. I want to encourage you, if you're not comfortable being in a close proximity with people, please feel free to stay at home and continue to see us online. That is okay. There, there's no, there won't be any judgment. There won't be any, we won't, we won't tease you next week when you show up to church. None of that will be happening. Um, because we really want you to come when you're ready. Um, but as we move forward, I'm, I know that there's some of you that are just ready to, to jump in and get connected and be here and be family, and we're really looking forward to that. So kind of an exciting time, and yeah. really looking forward to that. You're going to notice something special tonight. Uh, we're actually changing up the format, and uh, from here on out, on Wednesday nights, we're going we're gonna to try and uh, we'll be just doing a discussion format, jumping right into the text, and and uh, carrying on with the Bible verse and and maybe a couple of updates like we just did tonight to let you know what's happening. Um, and so there won't be any music tonight unless you hear music in your head. If you start hearing music, let me know because we can get counseling or something maybe for yeah. that. Or or you may need to slap me because I'm singing. So mm-hmm. um, what, <laughs> whatever happens, we'll just have to keep an eye on that. So um, I am excited about this text. I'll be honest. I, I it was definitely convicting today. Um, mm-hmm. and, and this week, as I've been wrestling through, how do we deal with this issue out of James about godly wisdom versus earthly wisdom? Um, if I were to share with you one of the great challenges for me, um, and probably the highlight of the verse was the, the center section in here in verse, uh, verse what does it say? Um, verse 14, but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. Um, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit as we go through, but that was the verse that kind of grabbed me this week, this idea of boasting in our selfishness, boasting in, our, in, in, in this, the, the issues of sin that are clearly evident here from mm-hmm. the worldly wisdom, and then being false to the truth. The, 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 like, those things are opposite of one another. If you're false, you can't be true. And, and so somehow the believers are looking at truth and, and then having a false reaction or a false interpretation, mm-hmm. and it, it's, it was very convicting as I was wrestling with that. And hopefully you'll see that as we discuss it today. You and I talked about the fact that there's way too much in here to get to, right? There is, yeah. And so we there's wanted to encourage much, the church. Yeah. We want to encourage each of you to not end tonight and say, man, that was good, thanks, and close your Bible, but to, to open the Word and to dig and to study and to wrestle and to pray through this passage, even when we're done, to ask God what He'd have, um, what work He would have you look at. How would He consider working in each of our lives individually? Yeah, to, to not just hear the Word, but yeah. to do it, as, as uh, James says. Get, get into the Word. Take every opportunity you can to dig into this, and hopefully this will just kind of whet your appetite because that's about all we can do. Right, <laughs> absolutely. Now, who is this written for? I want to I wanted to remind everybody mm-hmm. who James is writing to. Yeah, this is written to the church. This it, is written to Christians. So. Yeah, the tw- it was it's not written it was to the, the 12, world. 12 tribes who were in the dispersion. It's dispersion, yep. Those who, that, who were uh, persecuted, mm-hmm. but they're in the dispersion, but it was the church. Mm-hmm. Not the yeah, world. Not the world. This is not about the world. This is this not is, about them. Which makes it even, even though more it looks con- a little bit like them. It, yeah, it's kind of. Th- and I think that's part of the problem is that we see the world sees the negative aspects of this in the church, right? Because we're very critical of the world. Yep. But we're not supposed to be. We're supposed to be critical of ourselves. Yep. Not even those within the church. Well, I'm going to be very critical of you tonight because it's easier no on problem. me. Works for me. Okay. <laughs> That's not what we're going to do. Uh, that, that was a joke. That's not what we're doing. Because this is really about putting the mirror on our own lives yes. and saying, God, it, let your word, let the truth of your word transform me so that I'm not, this, I'm not behaving the way that this text is talking about. Mm-hmm. Well, let's read it. Would you read, uh, sure. read James chapter 3, uh, starting in verse 13 tonight, going through verse 18? Yeah. James 3, 13 to 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his conduct, good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Hmm. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, 
then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So the first thing that we're going to look at tonight that we need to address is this idea of earthly wisdom. Because um, clearly James is drawing the contrast. He's, he, he's saying, if, if you are wise, if there really is wisdom and understanding among you, then evaluate it by these things. Mm-hmm. If, l- look at their life, look at the things that they're doing, look at their works, and let that be the determination of what the wisdom is, whether it's of the earth or if it's of God mm-hmm. in, in the outcome. It's the whole theme of James is don't just say it. Right. Do it. Yep. And as a matter of fact, you don't need to talk at all. You're going to be known by how you. Oh, here comes the music. Do it. Yeah. It, it's our theme song for the James. Doobie, doobie, do, do what? <laughs> Shut, Shut up. up. <laughs> so. That's our song. That's our song for James. You can you can yep. sing that in your homes together. You need to do but make sure, and be. Yeah, make sure you give the shut up to the mirror, not to your spouse. Yeah, yeah that that's true. Be, this is, this yes, is and, in the mirror. And that is something singing. to remember as he's talked earlier about judgment and not judging each other. This is for us to judge ourselves. We can look at this and go, I know a guy that does that. Yeah, absolutely. That's not. You look in the mirror. Yep. This is about us. And he's talking about the church here, and that's where it gets really crazy when you're, you're going, the, the wisdom that comes down from above, but uh, this is not wisdom that comes from above, but it's earthly, unspiritual, and demonic, and it leads to disorder in every vile practice. That's the church. That's not the world. Right. He's not talking about the world. This is no. the church. And... That should be scary. It should be really scary because we don't really, we don't really think about it until you go back and go. You know what? I put that person down because I was have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition. I'm trying to make myself to be out better than he is. Yeah. You know the temptation yeah. for for I think for us as churches especially is to look at jealousy in a very in a very broad scope, uh, say jealousy mm-hmm. of another church, like mm-hmm. um, you know, could we be? Is it possible for a small church like ours to be jealous of a Valley Real Life? We could we could associate success mm-hmm. um, by by the number of pastors that they have, or the number of people that show mm-hmm. up, or the number of bud, you know b- dollars in their budget, and, and all of those things. But I think when we really start getting honest about this, the the bitter jealousy and and the selfish ambition. It really comes down to how we're treating one another in our church. Mm-hmm. It, it's really not. I mean, it, that the outside view, us looking at other churches or looking at the world or looking at other things in the world, may be a reflection of what's going on. But I think ultimately, what James is is challenging the believers to do is to look and say, "Is this the way you're behaving with your brothers and sisters?" Mm-hmm. And, and really take that kind of a heart a hard evaluation in our own hearts and to say, is this how we live? Yeah. Um, and, and, and how does that, ref- how does that uh, uh, present itself in the church? Um, I mean, I think it can be everything from, from somebody getting, uh, 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 you know, uh, somebody else getting to teach when, when we're not, or, or uh, you know, different, different people responding. I mean, you know, we, mm-hmm. could, we could probably be jealous because when Stefan's on, on mm-hmm. Wednesday nights, Somehow we have seventeen hundred people reached. When I'm on on Sunday mornings, it's like three hundred. I thought it was closer to three, but anyway, um, no. <laughs> I may have added a zero. I can't remember. <laughs> no. That's not. That was seven days. Wait, that was no. three days ago. <laughs> but those kind of they're yeah. super easy to do in in the body. Um, and then when you start adding selfish ambition, doing things for myself to promote myself within the church or to, to one-up somebody else or to be in a better spot, it, it is super, super easy. And um, Yeah, and when we look at the definition of bitter jealousy and selfish ambition, what, it, what the words actually mean, um, it's an envious and contentious rivalry mm-hmm. and a desire to put oneself forward in a partisan and fractious spirit, and I like this part, which does not disdain low arts. And we go, and it, it, it's like, oh, we don't have any of that. Do we gossip? Uh, we have now just gone to the low arts. Yeah. <laughs> and it's constant in right. the church. Right. Constantly talking behind people's backs yep. and things like that. It's, it's convicting. Very convicting. Yeah, <laughs> Very we're not convicting. even dealing with social media at this point. This is just what's happening in the church. Yes. Yes. 
Let's look at a contrast to this, because it's one mm-hmm. of the things that I love about... Um, actually, it's the thing that I love, but it's also one of the things that is so challenging when we're dealing with the Word of God, is that the Bible gives Jesus as a great contrast mm-hmm. um, to the issues of the flesh. So if you turn, turn with us to Philippians chapter 1, we're going to take a minute and look at Jesus. Imagine that. We're going to look at Jesus. I know that's a shocker for everybody. I think we'll actually go to Philippians 2, but that's okay. Is it Philippians 2? Yep, you were correct. Philippians, Philippians 2. 2. I would have got there. Eventually. I would have yeah. <laughs> got there after a little while. Philippians 2, chapter 1, or verse 1, 1 through 11. There's three ones on my notes. That's what right. I, It's got to be what's throwing me off. And the staff right now should already have this memorized. Oh, yeah. We actually had that in one of our <laughs> things that I didn't do. Now, I'm in conviction. All right. <laughs> Philippians 2, verse 1. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's amazing how Jesus, although he was the one person that was rightly uh, 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 authorized, uh, uh, was, was actually capable of being put at the top, of being yeah, exalted and held up above everyone else and actually being in that position of, of esteem and, and, and um, honor and leadership, he let go of that and mm-hmm. came to serve, not only to serve, but to serve unto death. And, and, and he considered everyone else above himself in that process in exercising obedience before the Lord. And that's what's so... That, that's probably the part that is so myopic about our view. We, we, see, we see right now so intently that we, we miss the fact that God exalted him above everyone else because of his obedience, and the, the Word of God actually says that he will exalt us if we take the posture of humility. If we humble ourselves, he will actually raise us up. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, I think far too often we run around beating one another up, trying to get our position, trying to make sure that our needs are taken care of, our, our preferences, our wants are fulfilled. Mm-hmm. And, and we do it in such a way that it, it really reflects that earthly, unspiritual, demonic influence of the enemy present in the flesh in the church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a great example. What a great contrast. What a great conviction that that is about how we look at one another, how we address this issue of wisdom. Um, I think it's interesting that what James says is do not boast. And, and when we were talking about that earlier, um, we got to remember, too, that James, what part of, I think, I think this is part of it, what he's doing is he, he's looking at the church saying, hey, you, you guys are professing to be believers, but your mm-hmm. actions don't line up with it. L- let me show you my faith by my works. You're mm-hmm. saying that you believe this stuff, but it's, it's not showing up. And I feel like that's kind of what he's doing here, going, stop, stop boasting mm-hmm. about your faith. And, and being false to the truth. The truth, the word of God says that your actions don't line up with being men of faith. Yeah, quit telling us everything that you are doing or are planning on doing. Just go out and do it. Go out and do, go out and yeah. be. Yeah, and that's being false to the truth. Yeah. You're telling me stuff that you're not doing. Not you. But anyway. I try not to. <laughs> I try to be honest. That's why, that's why I'm up here confessing sin almost every week. I'm looking for somebody else that wants to volunteer well, to be the confessor for next week. And really, that's the way that we're supposed to live in the church, is with that kind of transparency. Right. You know, it's not just you that's confessing the truth of, of your own heart. It's all of us doing it together. People aren't, if we 
we're doing that all the time, people wouldn't be being critical. No. <laughs> it's, it, it'd be, yeah, we're all in this together. I think that's part of what we miss in the church is the reality of how, how messy we all are, how much we all struggle with this. And, and when the grace of God, when, when this wisdom that we're going to see is, is actually exercised and applied to the church, it, it's one of the greatest places to be. It's one of the most loving, caring, uh, deeply mm-hmm. healing places to be. But, but when we stand in uh, opposition to that, when we're pretending, when we're boasting about our, our religiousness or those things, and we're denying the truth, Mm -hmm. and not acknowledging the wretchedness that's in our heart and allowing the Word of God to purify it, to change it, to to break it as the potter does the 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 you know the jar and, and to make us moldable clay. When we're not allowing to do that, we have to. It's by necessity that we have to push people away and become critical of one another so that we can't be seen. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what happens, I think, way too often is that the church gets stuck in trying to hide their jealousy and their selfish ambition and all of this, all of the, vi- what does it say, every vile practice. that we're, you know, we're trying to hide that that's the reality of what's going on in our flesh and it's what we're battling against every day. What we were talking about earlier and fun, but it's the emperor's new clothes. It's Right. We're, <laughs> it really it is. is. We, the, everybody can see what's going on yep. in our lives, that but we flying. cover it all up anyway, yep. and we act like everything's okay. That is one of the great challenges of this, isn't it? Um, is actually seeing the truth of who we are. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why it is. I, I mean, I think I have an idea. I think God designed it. I think God actually allowed it to be hard for us to see our own stuff so that we needed one another. So that in, in my in my best case scenario, I have a friend who can look at me and say, hey, that doesn't honor the Lord. Stop. Mm-hmm. That, that doesn't line up. The truth is not, it's not ringing true in the statements that you're making here because I can't see those flaws in my life well. I, I, I miss them. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know if this is a great illustration, but somebody equated it to underwear on the floor. Um, if, if you have... <laughs> Uh, I don't know if it's all guys, but many men um, seem to have this blindness to laundry on the floor. Um, and, and I know a ton, of, a ton of brides who try to train their husbands to get it into the hamper or into the laundry basket. And my bride's been working for, on that for years. Well, there's a magic table. And you stick, I've seen you the stick, magic table. It doesn't matter what you put on that table. It gets yep, cleaned Ours off. is a magic basket. Mm-hmm. And the laundry comes up clean and it's in my dresser when I'm done. I love you, sweetie. Um, <laughs> But the reality is, is that there, sometimes our junk we can't see. Sometimes mm-hmm. our mess we can't see. And I think God did that so that we would be dependent on one another mm-hmm. as we seek Him and, 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 again, love God, love others. But the whole point is we need one another to see this stuff. We need one another so that when I'm exercising selfish ambition, a brother of mine can come along the side of me and say, that doesn't line up with the truth. Stop. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Um, because it's hard for me to see it. Mm-hmm. And I want to see it. I really do. I, I don't want to be uh, earthly, unspiritual, influenced by demonic. Influ- I don't want that. That, that. that to me is like no bueno. No, no good at all. What does it lead to? I love what, um, I love what James does in here. He, he says it leads to disorder and every vile practice. And I thought, what better time to talk about every vile practice than to jump into Galatians 5, everybody's favorite passage, Galatians 5, uh, ch- uh, verses 19 and 21. Why don't you guys read that to us? <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> Go ahead. You guys can read it. It's right there on the screen. How, how about this? How about if we read it together? Because you've got it right there on the screen in front of you. Uh, you may not have it in your Bibles in the same translation that I have, but you have it right on the screen in front of you. So let's read together. Mm-hmm. Uh, Galatians 5, verse 19 through 21. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And 
He is speaking to the church. Again. <laughs> you know, somebody, a good friend of mine once said that uh, a good term for that is they have one hot mess. Mm -hmm. And, and I, it's, it's almost, it's almost like we think that if we can just cover it up enough, that somehow maybe we won't feel the guilt of it. Maybe, maybe we won't have to deal with the shame of it because we're, I don't know. I don't know why we, I don't know why. I mean, I know why we cover it up because I hate the fact that, that I see some of those things in my own life. I hate it. Well, and we, we put it in degrees. Yeah, we do. Sexual immorality. Yep. Well, that's just for those who really go over the top. Right, 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 right. Yep. Oh, did it go through your mind? Well, let's oh, not shoot. bring Matthew into that. Yeah, that's right. Le Impurity. Leave Jesus' words out of this. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's one of the things that we had discussed earlier. It's uh, kind of a, a good way to put it is you think about Facebook and Twitter and all of these things. So if you go and put something on Facebook, with a, and it's, it's so easy to do that in politics or probably politics is the, the main one for now, and you just throw that stuff out there because... Why? Because you're angry and you're trying to make yourself look better than somebody else and all of that, as opposed to what James says. Is it first pure? Is it peaceable? Is it gentle? Is it open to reason? And uh, that's convicting when yeah. you just go back and look at your, your posts and go, ah, maybe not. So, yeah. but yeah, and, uh, and, that's, and he's dealing with that. This is in the church. Absolutely. This is all here. Rivalries, dissensions, fits of anger. I had to apologize uh, to my bride because um, the other day when I got home, I responded emotionally to her and, and I had to go back and apologize because it was not mm -hmm. appropriate. It was not gentle. It was not kind. It, it, didn't, it was not assuming the best in her. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to go back and, and apologize and, and tell her I was sorry because my heart wasn't right mm -hmm. at that moment in that response. And you know, it ended well um, for us in that spot. But how many how many times in my life is that a necessity? I, I posted a video earlier today. Some of you have probably seen it on Facebook where the woman tried to kill me um, on the road. Um, she was trying to drive over my Mustang. Mm -hmm. And you heard the horn, and you heard, if you listened to it, you heard the horn, and you heard me rev up the car and, and, and you know, trying to make some noise. But you guys, I was in, I was in a spiritual battle for my soul at that moment mm -hmm. because I, I, I had to deal with rage. I had to deal with, with anger and words and, and, and all of those things were in my head. And, and I had, I had to make a decision whether or not they were going to get out, whether I was going to let my tongue loose Mm -hmm. As we talked about uh, last Wednesday, about it being this world of fire set on fire by the by the pit of hell itself, I, I I was wrestling with all of those things in the Word of God, going, "Am I going to give in at this moment? Am I going to surrender to the flesh at this moment and be myself?" Mm -hmm. Now, the reason that I posted that one was because I didn't. And what goes I haven't and what goes through your mind did. at that time. <clears throat> I mean, it's all of us. It's not just yep. you. Goes through our mind is what are they doing? Why is it? It's my lane. It's yep. my car. Yep. It's my. I had the right all away. that. I even said it on there. I have yeah. the right away. Yeah. Instead of I'm right. I wonder if she's lost. I wonder yeah. if she's in distress. I wonder if and you know what? It doesn't matter. That's the hard part. Yeah. Am I responding? Am I being peaceable and gentle yep. and impartial and sincere? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's too convicting, so I think we'll just quit here. Should we move on? Yeah, we definitely should. The problem is if we're moving on, we're moving into that spot. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's the next, that's where we have to go, mm -hmm. um, is we have to address this reality of what it look, what heavenly or godly wisdom looks like. We know what earthly wisdom looks like. It is jealousy, bitter jealousy, selfish ambition that leads, that, that's driven or influenced by earthly unspiritual demonic influences and it leads to disorder in every vile practice that's mm -hmm. earthly wisdom that's that's the really the wisdom of the world and it's the the wisdom of the, of satan and it, it's what he influences um what his influence at times brings actually out in the church it, it actually exposes that reality in the church 
But this is what godly wisdom looks like. Uh, and you, you just said it, first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. We have a couple passages we wanted to read, we think, that that support that and really highlight that. The first one is 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 6 through 16. Would you mind reading that one for me, Craig? No problem. I'll go find it here. 1 Corinthians 2, verse, uh, starting in verse 6. 6 to 16, okay. That's the yet among the mature, right? Yes. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our, uh, for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Mm -hmm. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love Him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thought except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one for who has understood the mind of the lord so as to instruct him but we have the mind of christ isn't it interesting in that a particular text paul's wrestling with the corinthian church to and it's almost like he's saying stop stop worrying about the fact that the world doesn't understand this mm -hmm. stop being mad at, at those who don't have the spirit the ungodly the unspiritual stop being mad at them because they're not going to understand the wisdom of god but we should this is not it's not a mystery to us anymore because the spirit's been given to us these are the things of the character of god they're who he is and it's the stuff that should be present it should be evident in our lives and, and I, it shouldn't make us feel better than the world there's a tendency for us to take yeah. this and say, oh, the world doesn't understand this. They're a bunch of idiots. Right. N that's not the point. The point is we, too, were once like that. Yes. And it is, we're there to try and save those. Right. To love them. To love them and bring them into the kingdom by, as he says, what we do. Yep. And how we do it. And, and that's the beauty of the, that this wisdom of God. Um, I love the emphasis on peace in this, and I don't think we teach this enough. Um, because uh, Jesus was Jesus a uh, uh, um, a weakling? Was Jesus a weak man? Not, Not at all. all. No. He, he was he soft? I, I don't think he was. I mean, at one point it says that he stood up and walked through a crowd that wanted to kill him. Well, and he was a carpenter. He was a carpenter. He was a, and a, con a construction. And guy. what he took in dying. Yep. Uh, uh, none of us Incredible. that I know of could ever take. Incredible. He was a tough dude. <laughs> and yeah. so when we think about Jesus and he talks about being the, this peace and this stuff, he, he's choosing to exercise the peace of God. He's choosing mm -hmm. to be a peacemaker. Mm -hmm. not, for the, not because that's, that's the best he can conjure up, but because it's the best for the will of the Father, for the kingdom, mm -hmm. and for the world, for the lost. And ultimately, I mean, for us. Mm -hmm. And so he, he calls us to do what he has done. In fact, we'll see this in Galatians chapter 5. Turn, turn with me, Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 22, and we're going to finish up that passage in Galatians because it actually references the, the contrast or the opposite of the flesh is the presence of the Spirit and the fruit that is produced in the life of the believer where the Spirit is active and, and present. And, and this is what it looks like in our lives, when the Spirit is producing fruit 
in us. Uh, Galatians 5.22. But the, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. There's peace again. Mm-hmm. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. Isn't it interesting that the contrast of being led by the Spirit is conflict in the church? Maybe I'm, yeah. maybe I'm making too big a deal out of that. No, it is. It, it sure looks like that's what he's saying. Um, in fact, what we know, the beauty of what, what we know is coming is James chapter 4 goes right into this. He, he's actually going to launch right into what's really wrong in the church um, and how we, how we can look at this and evaluate where we're at with this and what the real problem is, the real heart issue. James just never lets up. He just doesn't seem to ever take <laughs> his foot off the throttle, does he? No, he doesn't. Or the throat, whichever one it is. <laughs> and then verse 18, a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. You know, when you think about a harvest of righteousness, I, I honestly probably, and until I was wrestling with this, I wouldn't have put peace as the, um, I wouldn't have put peace in, in that discussion. I would have, I probably would have put a harvest of righteousness is sown in good deeds or in faith or in, mm-hmm. in, in obedience to the Lord. I probably wouldn't have put peace in there. And yet James is really going after the body of believers and how they exercise their faith in the context of the world and in the church. And peace is a paramount issue mm-hmm. to him. Mm-hmm. I think it's interesting that we'll actually find that in the Old Testament. And I love that. Turn in your Bibles to Hosea chapter 10. This is not something new. This is not a new teaching that um, that that you know James came up with because of Jesus. It's it's actually I think it's actually a ref- reflection of the presence of God. It's 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 the reflection of the character and presence of God. You want to read Hosea ten uh, verse twelve for us? It says sow for yourselves righteousness, reap steadfast love, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. Incredible picture of the harvest, of sowing, of reaping, of rain. Mm-hmm. It's this picture of, of, a, of the ground being prepared, of a harvest or of a, a, a pro- produce being sown into the ground and then, and then being grown with wa- being watered and growing into a product, into fruit. And what's crazy is that Hosea was the prophet sent to Israel to address their um, idolatry, their, their adultery, if you will, in their worship of other idols. God basically says, you have been an adulterer. You have mm-hmm. violated my covenant. You violated the marriage vows that we've made of, of being covenantly connected and united in this, in this covenant of, of law and of truth, and, you, and you've broken that. Mm-hmm. And here's Hosea, who, who is the prophet that had to walk through that and con- uh, confront Israel on that, and he talks about them breaking up the fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. Mm-hmm. And what is the produce of that? He says that there's a harvest. Or does he say? That he may come and rain righteousness on uh, a righteousness upon you. There's this, for some reason, righteousness can be sown and and produced in this process um it doesn't and it doesn't just happen no he's like like we talked about earlier you're breaking up fallow ground right this is ground that hasn't been it hasn't been plowed at least in some time right you know it's uh, not if been, it's cared been left for. foul but so you're gonna that takes a lot of work yep you've got to break it open you've got to get rid of the weeds you've got to do it over and over again and you have to do it in an orderly fashion and in in a proper order yeah and i think that what this should do is we we can't do this on our own huh nope, nope. um but we have to dive into the word of god and pray that he will open our minds because that we as we talked about before it says in there that 
there'll come a time when you won't need teachers because right. the spirit of God will teach you. Yeah, absolutely. And it's all here in his word. He's yeah. laid it all out. So. so the challenge for us is not mm-hmm. to boast about our righteousness, not to boast about our faith, mm-hmm. not to be false to the truth, mm-hmm. but it's to read the word of God. It's to take the text apply it to our ho- to our hearts and acknowledge where we're off acknowledge where where we where we're missing it mm-hmm. and then turn to the lord and 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 seek him to seek his righteousness to seek his wisdom isn't it interesting that early on in james james says if you lack wisdom ask right. and god will give abundantly without reproach he doesn't he doesn't mock us because we don't does we don't have the wisdom he knows we don't have the wisdom he knows this is the condition of the people mm-hmm. i know what your hearts are i know what the issues are Ask for it. I'll give it to you. I will teach. I I will bring this uh, this into you. The problem is, it's probably the trials. It's probably the whole process that we're supposed to be joyful about that's going to produce this wisdom, this godly wisdom in our lives. And so that's really the challenge, I think, for us, for you, and for me, and and, mm-hmm. and for the body is to say, okay, God, man, am I am I doing any part of my life? in bitter jealousy of someone else, or out of selfish ambition? Am I pursuing or following earthly, unspiritual, or demonic influences in how I think, how I relate to people in the church, how I take care of my needs over other people's needs? Is the world or or the effects of Satan, are, are those influences present in my life and affecting how I care for one another? I mean, the reality is, it, it looks like this. We read a text that says we should not gossip. And then we immediately go and start talking to somebody else in the church about someone else gossiping. Mm-hmm. Stop it! I mean, that, stop! That's what, it say, that's what James is saying. That mm-hmm. should not be. These things should not happen because we know the truth. So let's address it that way. Get the mirror out. Open the Word of God, put your face in it, and let it reflect on who you are and, and how we're responding to life, and then deal with it in that reality. Mm-hmm. Deal with God in that truth and, and ask for the wisdom that is lacking, and we all need it. We, we all need it. Um, yes. I, I yeah. can look through there and, and pure, peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. Maybe. Maybe some days. Maybe in some spots. But to say that that's how I deal with people in the church, outside of that that's how I deal with people on a regular basis, not so. And when you compare this to Hosea and the things that he's talking about here, we have this litmus test here that says, am I doing this out of selfish ambition? Yeah. Or am I doing this in a, in a way that's peaceable? Mm-hmm. If I'm doing it this way, I am unfaithful to my husband, the father. Yeah. I am I have rejected him, and I am I have a wandering eye, mm-hmm. um, or it, whatever. Yep, yep. But here, where's my focus? Right. And if my focus is on him, adoring him, loving him, by reading his words, understanding that this is truth, the world is not. Yep. Um, yeah. By reading it, it and obeying it. I mean, the problem Just is James do says what it says. You can read it and then not do it. Mm-hmm. What good is that? Yeah. Don't be hearers of the word only, but be doers. Doobie, doobie, do be, do be, do, do what, do what? Shut up, shut up. That's our thing. <laughs> and we're gonna. <laughs> I think we might just leave you guys with that. <laughs> Man, what's God? What is God challenging you in your hearts? What is what is He pointing at? Mm-hmm. Please take a minute and do the personal evaluation. Um, you know. Craig and I, we, we, we try and be honest. The guys that come up here, we're, we're trying to be honest and, and wrestle with the, the reality of where our hearts are at. But we can't wrestle for you. Mm-mm. I can't wrestle for you. I can wrestle with what I know is in my heart. But I can't do the work that God needs to do in you. That is, that's what you need to do with Him, and it's, it's what you need to do um, on a daily basis. It's really what picking up your cross and following Him, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's putting our lives back on the cross and recognizing that we're dead. The flesh is dead. We're alive in Christ. And, and let's adorn ourselves with that reality, with that truth, and approach life today. Approach, approach God. Seek God tonight with that reality. 
and and do the work that he's calling that his spirit is is impressing on you even right now there the, most likely if you are a child of god and you're looking at this going there's something in here i need to deal with lord mm-hmm. we, we just read what the what the what the acts of the flesh what the desires of the flesh look like the difference between that and the spirit there there's potentially something that god's put on your heart to address with him tonight don't close your bible don't turn this off without taking care of that that mm-hmm. moment that that feeling that issue don't do that. Deal with him tonight and do the business that only you can do through the power of the Spirit with the Lord, with your Messiah, uh, with Jesus tonight. So, man, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful evening um, and uh, really looking forward to seeing you guys next week. And um, my uh, really appreciate you being up here with me, Craig, and wrestling through this. Thanks for taking the time and being here tonight. Um, and uh, very excited to see what God does. Next week, Wednesday night, Chapter 4, uh, man, bring your big boy pants, because mm-hmm. you're probably going to need them. So, uh, yeah. God bless. Have a good night.